it isn't just about swanning about uh, like Eddie Hearn does at shows and that, wearing a nice suit and that and having a beer with everybody. That's when the hard work's done. The hard work is done behind the scenes. I mean, you, you've only got to look at what Steffi Bull does. He's on the go all day, every day, with, with boxing related problems and issues and and he, and Dennis always says to me, you need to take a leaf out of his book and what he's doing. He, he's on the ground floor and he's a grafter. Now, and I've I've took a lot of ideas off him and pinched his, not, not pinched his brain, brain thief, I suppose like you could say. I've just, I soaked it all up like a sponge and you're still learning all the time and it is so brutal at the other end. You know, when you're like, I'd say Steffi Bulls at the bottom of the ladder. He's not got a TV deal and he's a small old promoter. I'd say Dennis is one, one, one rung up, but uh, but Dennis, don't, don't forget, has had pay-per-view, so he's been a few levels up and he's come back down again and he's regrouped. And, and it's like snakes and ladders, isn't it? It's very, very hard and brutal and you're dealing with people that are fragile and... And uh, uh, it's hard, it's so hard, and and I can understand why Steve Goodwin is a numbers man as well because Steve Goodwin shows he has to make everything tally, doesn't he? But they don't do, they don't, they've never seem to have TV, do they? They never seem to get a TV deal, do they? Oh man, you, you just thrown a lot at me there. So <laughs> if you look at Steffi, Steffi's got the stable, no outlet. If you look at Dennis, Dennis has got the outlet but no stable. Yeah. Now, really, if 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 anyone was smart, what you what you'd be doing is you'd be like, why don't we work together? No, they can't. No, they've tried, haven't they? And this is my point. Now, then, this is a problem boxing has because everyone in boxing wants to be the main man. Yeah. Everyone. You know, it's like it's like you, Russ, right? Glenn Rose could get you in his gym, help him helping him train fighters. In a couple of years. You'll be like, I need to be the main man. Yeah, that probably. Yeah. Glenn, but because that's just how the, that's what the sport does to you. Yeah. You know, and and, and people don't realise that sometimes you make more money if you all work together. Yeah, you. That, I mean, that's why MTK are smashing it, aren't they? Because they're willing to work. We Frank Warren, we Eddie Earn, obviously we, we, they're working with Dennis at the moment. Uh, they're willing to work with everybody, Mick and of the lot. They're not. There's no barriers, is there? But whereas, if you look at Matchroom, Tony Sims don't want to work with Frank Warren, does he? Dave Caldwell don't want to work with Frank Warren. Yeah, but look at the fights MTK are making now. Like MTK are making all those fights. Remember in the old days when it was like just small hall promoters not working with that small hall promoter. Yeah. Now you're getting guys moving around. So you're getting guys like, I know Dex Bellman was meant to fight Dan Aziz in December. Yeah. God knows what's happened to Dex Bellman since, but, you know, that's the kind of fight MTK can make happen, which wasn't happening before. Yeah. So, boxing's in this really interesting space now where I don't think you can be a Steve Goodwin for much longer because look at how many times your call's been occupied by either Match from doing a next-gen show or MTK doing a televised show. You know, why do, I, why do I need to see a Steve Goodwin show after that? I don't. So, so how do you adapt to, to a changing market? Mate, I, I don't think anyone's got that answer yet. And I think Dennis is in a similar position where De Den, Den's got to have a big 2020. Yeah, and got to the now. This is the time to be planning for 2020. Then yeah, this is what, yeah, he's already said to me the other day, he says, we need a big one next year. We'll have to but, but he's still talking about ticket deals. And, and at some point, yeah. I think you have to say... Let's move beyond the ticket deals and find other ways to, to essentially monetize Generate. doing boxing. And I think there are opportunities, but it's mm. not this whole thing of just get a load of ticket sellers. Because when you get a load of ticket sellers, your product tends to be quite shit. But then when you get a really good product, it's not always filled with ticket sellers. So it's, can you ride that out for a year, keep your guys locked in so they don't run off to other promoters, and then get that momentum, start to build it. I was always surprised, to be honest with you, that Den didn't just take the approach of, let me just build Dennis Hobson in Sheffield, Barnsley, Leeds, uh, Workstop, and all those sorts of mad areas. Yeah. Edlington, Connersborough, <laughs> you know, the, where the Kings live, all those <laughs> sorts of places. Why, why not build the Hobson brand? Forget the boxes for a 
second. People just come to see it. Build himself up. Yeah. Like Eddie Hearn has, hasn't he? He goes to a show, he shakes everybody's hand, doesn't he? Yeah, that's what Den needs to do. Because Den's got far more interesting things to say than Hearn has. That's yeah. the thing. And it's just, he has to embrace it. And, and actually, like, when I see Den, I'll say this to his face. I'll say, he's got to take responsibility now. He can't keep looking to the boxes. He has to take responsibility for relighting the fire in Sheffield Boxing. He's got his shoulders now, in my opinion. He's got to come on channel more and he's got to sell himself, hasn't he? I mean, he does good numbers on my channel. Well, well, I don't know about the channel, but maybe when you get some studio lights and some nice comfy chairs. <laughs> when I get to my next office. Yeah. Yeah. So so we've covered we've covered the MTK show then. Uh, let's go to the Steffi Bull show. I sent you a screenshot of Steffi's show in Doncaster last night. Uh, nobody one beat nobody two, nobody three beat nobody four. I don't think many people care about Steffi Ball show. Mm, well, I mean Kyle Youssef, right? He will he fought on our show against a guy with thirty one wins, and then he's gone with Steffi, and then if this is a kid sixteen and oh, and he's putting him in with a kid Norton twelve. I mean, what what's what's that about? That's keeping him. They're keeping him warm for when her needs. Hearn will need one of these kids to, to put his guys over, and that's all Steffi does is just keep these guys warm. They're not meant to go anywhere. They're not meant to win anything, to be honest with you. They're just there to... They're cannon fodder. That's what he's creating, just cannon fodder. Yeah. It's... Uh, it's not it's not good, like, I mean, that show that he's had on last night... Uh, I mean, if you everybody won it except Levi K Kinnisona, right? He's got Callum Simpson two and zero. Oh, he's in with a guy four and forty one. Kyle Youssef fifteen and zero. Oh, he's in with a guy three and forty seven and a draw. J A Metcalf debut. He's in with a guy five and sixty five. Well, that's a debut though. James Rayworth one and zero oh, fighting a guy two and sixty three. Dempsey Wales in his second fight, he's fighting a guy two and sixty, so he, these kids are gonna have to have them sort of fights. Ahmed Jahan Z five and oh, fighting a guy one and thirteen, you could pass that off I suppose. James Flint six and oh, he's in with a guy with a losing record. Levi Kinosia Kin Kin Kinsonia six and oh, he's in with a guy two and one and he's lost against a guy two and one. So has he been found out? And Lee Appleyard, headlining, 15-5 and a draw, fighting a guy 9-7-2. and seven and, two. and that ended up going to... Let's have a look. That ended up going to points. Points win. So he, has be, folks, he has to be careful though, mate. Like, some of these guys with the 3-63 and 63 records, if you gave them enough money, they'd ice the guy in the other corner. Some of these journeymen are pretty damn good. Willie Warburton. Yeah. Willie Warburton can survive. I mean, he spars top kids and that, and he gets rounds done. And you know, some of these kids are just coming for a move around, and I don't like that. Me, I don't, I don't like it at all. Some of them aren't. I know that kid that Dempsey Whale fought was a tough kid, and he's he's two and zero. But these are babies, aren't they? Now, what are they going to do? Tread water like that? When the 16 and 0 like Kyle Youssef fighting guys Norton 12, I mean, well, how much longer can they pad that record out waiting for Hearn to call? Why ain't he in a title fight, Kyle Youssef 16 and 0? Uh, what is he a bantam or some a fly or something? He, he, you know he should be in a he should be in a title fight at that weight, shouldn't he? Now, surely. Who's gonna put the money in? But who's gonna put the money in for that fight? Well, I don't know, but uh, he's supposed to sell a ticket, isn't he? Alright, folks, let, let's say you put him in for a title fight. Put him in for a, an English title fight, for example. Alright, you put him in for an English title fight. That's it's a flyweight. Yeah, maybe it'll cost you eight grand, nine grand. I have no yeah. idea, mate. But you really want to put that money back behind him? Well, Steffi's driving around in a Porsche 911 and he's buying his missus 100 grand car. So if you can do that, why can't you get this kid here a British title shot? Because this kid here is wasting his career, isn't he? Yeah, but how special is this kid? Well, 16 and 0, 
He's a flyweight. Oh, I well, uh, we, they say he's all right. They say he's British level. What, right now? Or well, yeah, I mean, th that's what people are saying. They're saying he's British. They're saying he beats Tommy Frank. And Tommy's Tommy's already got a Commonwealth, hasn't he? So they're saying he beats Tommy Frank. Make that fight. Well, I, I, I'd be up for telling Dennis to make it, but, you know, there's, you're up against that, well, we don't want to work with them kind of thing, innit? Yeah, because they're paying everybody, aren't they? I think that's a good fight, Tommy Frank and him. But I also think that Tommy Frank's Sonny Edwards is a good fight as well. Yeah, maybe all these fights have because these are little guys, they can fight each other four times. Yeah, they can have a trilogy, can't they? Easily. But uh, anyway, moving on from uh, moving on from Steffi's show, he's having a good blessing. We'll give him a shout out, make him relevant. And his partners we uh, big hero of mine, Ryan Rhodes. So that that's good. So I like Ryan. Uh, so we've done hey, Steph. Why did Ryan choose Steffi and not Dennis? I don't understand that. I don't know, mate. It's uh, you'd have thought Ryan would have wanted to go with somebody who's got TV, wouldn't you? So I, I don't know, but Maybe Ryan's Ryan got. Wants to be back on Sky. Pardon? Maybe Ryan just wants to be back on Sky. Maybe. Who's to say that Dennis might not be on Sky uh, in the next 18 months because there's some big changes coming at Sky soon. But we'll get to that in a bit. So we've done the Steffi show. We've done the MTK show. Golden Contract show. Uh, right then, let's go. Let's have a look. Um, there's so much juicy stuff to talk about this weekend. Let's go straight in, balls deep, on the Liverpool show. Uh, John Ryder against Callum Smith, which is a good what, which is a good fight, isn't it? Good match up to say it's not pay per view. No, look. So, Callum Smith, he's been fighting for a while. He's Euro level John Ryder, isn't he? John Ryder, in my opinion, were all over Callum Smith like a rash, mate. Callum Smith, he jumped on him. He didn't give him time to settle. Now, a long time ago, I had a conversation with Carl Froch about Boote, right? And he said to me, he felt that the one thing he's learnt about fighting a southpaw, because he fought Brian McGee, don't forget, is you don't let him get into a rhythm. Now, he dropped Brian McGee a few, t a few times and he knocked him out cold in end. But you don't let him get into a rhythm. And after that, I thought, he's going to jump on Boote. And he did, didn't he? He left it all in the ring. Now, Callum Smith didn't jump on John Ryder, did he? He let him get into a rhythm of roughing him up and that, didn't he? Uh, oh, it's tricky. So, Callum Smith's not deserving of the Side, 
he was able to rush in on that side, get up close, and then once he had his hands free, he was just hitting anything he could. And so that unsettled Callum Smith enough. If you look, there were a lot of those left uppercuts coming in, and then when Callum would twist him around, he just throw another uppercut in there. And it was just, you could see it was distressing for Callum Smith because he was like, I don't know what to do here. Yeah. Well, looking at their records, right, Callum Smith has three wins over world champions, right? Obviously, Groves, Hassan and Dam, and Rocky Fielding, but Callum Smith's last six wins before Ryder were going back uh, three year. N N Nemis Apati, Blackledge, Scog Scogland, Holtzkern, Groves and Dam. Now, Callum Smith were also as, as being in the top five WBC since two, well, s since basically 18 months in as a pro. He's had numerous fights for the WBC silver belt, the international belt. He never seemed to fight the champion a bit. He never seemed to fight for the WBC belt. He pulled out of the Anthony Dirrell fight. Dirrell ended up fighting somebody else. He just, he looks to me like Callum Smith, and I know I'm not wrong here, but he's been wrapped in cotton wool, Callum Smith. Like all them Smiths have been, except Paul Smith. He's the only one that took risks and, and fought people, Paul Smith, and that's why I give him credit. He's the one that's been in with the De Gales, the Groveses, the Andre Wards, you know, Abraham twice. Off at back of beating Tommy Tolan. Now, I think, right, we all got hoodwinked into Callum Smith's a beast and he makes the weight easy. I've been told of somebody who knows knows the, what goes on up at EIS and he doesn't make the weight easy. He don't make it. Now they're saying... Oh, he didn't do weight right and he's really a light heavy. Now, because he's been in a fight where he's had to fight, hasn't he? Because he's breezed through everything, hasn't he? And, he's, and, and they're talking about him as pound for pound before yesterday on Eddie Hearn's pound for pound list because he's got a ring belt. And he, he's just craziness, Terry. His CV doesn't suggest it, does it? Groves were... George Groves was shot worn, wasn't he? George Groves, uh, who fought Carl Froch the first time, would smoke Callum Smith's boots, wouldn't he? Mate, we're 40 something minutes in, and now, now you've hit full porky. I love this. This is what I need to hear. <laughs> like, this is what I need to hear. You hear that fire porky, man. Thank you. Um, I'm back. Look, look, the time to worry about Callum Smith was when he, he struggled to beat that kickboxer. Was it a Holtzkin? Holtzkin, Nicky Holtzkin, yeah, 12 and 0. Yeah. Thirteen and oh, sorry. He he judged distance very well, didn't he? Him, and that's what kickboxers do. They judge distance very well, and he gave him all sorts of problems, Callum Smith. And it were a, it we want a walkover looking at the judges' cards as well. No, exactly. It was a, it was a worrying fight for him, and then you, you you go through all of that, then you fight George Groves with one arm, right? Who was just there for the payday, and just wanted to get out. Yeah, he didn't look right, and it were neck and neck, you know, till he got caught. Yeah, and then George is just like, how am I going to survive this with one up? Bollocks to this. And he was out, fair enough. And then you find Hassan and Dan, who, come on, man, that guy's, he's like 50, isn't he? Like, he's seen better years. I think he's pushing 40 year old, isn't he? And he's a middleweight. Scogland. Bl Scogland and Blue Blackledge. Yeah, Blackledge, come on. Fielding, you yeah. know. substance. Scotland was a solid amateur but never really had anything as a pro to suggest he was elite level. Has he got an elite win on his record? You could say George Groves but then there's a question mark next to it, isn't there? Exactly. And do you know what I mean? John Ryder for me just raised more questions. Like John that. Ryder, Euro level in my opinion. We get we all get carried away with this world level, British level, Euro level, elite level, right. Somebody said to me the other day, I think it were Tommy Tommy the Guru Allen said to me, Carl Froch is not elite. So I said to him, well, if you ring magazine, pound for pound, number six, and you're not elite, what, what is elite? Because I, I, I'm, I'm lost. <laughs> no, nah, Froch isn't elite for me. No? He's, he's, not... he's, he's great. He's, for me, he's a British boxer, great. But he's not that special. 
special guy where you say, I could have put him in in any era and he would have won. Right, then, well, what about if that's what you think? Well, fair enough, you're, that's your opinion and you're entitled to it. But what about what level is Callum Smith? If Carl Froch is not elite, Carl Froch must be world level then. Right, so if Carl Froch is world level, Callum Smith won a Ring Magazine belt, but yet Carl Froch didn't win Ring Magazine belt, because this is what Gallagher's pushing. Callum's got a ring belt, he should be pound for pound. But if Callum Smith's not world level, he must be Euro level then. At the moment, I'd say he is. Yeah. But he just happens to have got a ring belt in a poor era. Well, they threw it into the tournament, didn't they? Whereas Froch really had to go through Ward and Boutte and all them guys, didn't he, to get to get to get any any proper wins. And, and you see, Paul, that, that's one of the issues with referring to box record stats. Yeah. Stats don't give you the context. It's like yeah. looking at a picture of black and white. Like boxing's all about 4K high definition color. So it's all about oh, he's got a ring belt. That doesn't mean anything. Where did you get the belt from? Eddie Earn got him, didn't he? Guy, if you didn't get the belt from an elite guy, then we don't care. Yeah, he didn't. He, he didn't like get it off Andre Ward, did he? No. And for me, like, if you say to me who is elite, Andre Ward is elite. Mm -hmm. Someone like Peterbiev is elite. Why? Because you can put them in any era. You could have put Ward in that sort of era with Ben Eubank, Tony, Roy Jones Jr. He'd have been competitive. He'd have beat them, money. Yeah, and like I said, yeah, Baturbi, Baturbi, he's a good in any era, and him and Ward at the peaks are an amazing fight, isn't it? Exactly, and and, and Froch is kind of that guy who's just at a half step behind. Hmm. But they're saying he's Froch has done well in his career, aren't they? Now, when you look at the wins, I always revert it back to wins over world champions. It's something I've got in my head. Now, Ward's got seven wins over world champions, same as Ray Leonard and Hagler. Froch has got more than that. But Callum Smith, he doesn't really have any credible elite wins. He hasn't got a, a, a big name that jumps out at you apart from Groves. And, that, and like I said, there were a question mark over it. John Ryder, he's not beat a champion at all, but he's on a good run of beating Euro level guys, isn't he? But see, this, this who beat a champion thing can be a trap sometimes because if nothing else, Moore would beat Carl Froch easily, right? Yeah. So, so everything Froch had done up until that point, Moore just trampled over by going, listen, as good as you are, Carl Froch, and as much as people respect you, I've just handed you your backside. I've just schooled you. I've shown you that I'm a better man. I'm a better fighter. I'm stronger. I'm smarter. He, de he demonstrated all of that. So so even just that one win that Ward has is enough to, to put him above Froch. Because it wasn't a lucky win. Yeah. You know, I remember you were crying after that. Like, you just couldn't believe your hero could, could get broken down like that. Yeah, you're loving the sight, Terry. <laughs> Prick. <laughs> anyway, moving on. <laughs> right, so we've covered the John Ryder, Andre Ward uh, fight. Uh, John Ryder, sorry, uh, Callum Smith. We we both got John Ryder winning, haven't we? Right. Yeah. Now, what we're, what we're going to talk about now is... During the fight, you've got the Sky people going to speak to Paul Smith and and Bell you and Bell you's obviously commentating and they grew up in the same gym rotunda and you've got other people around around the event. They're all doing pundit work on the friends now. Paul Smith at the end gave one round to Ryder. One round out of twelve. Now Bell you had Ryder winning three rounds. Joe Gallagher had him winning three rounds, four rounds, that was it. Four rounds at max. He was saying it was seven rounds to four with a round shared, Joe Gallagher. Now, I just think they're just trying to cover their asses myself. I think Callum Smith got exposed. 
and I think that the jury is still out on Callum Smith. Yeah, we, we keep reverting back to the George Groves win, but before that he struggled with a kickboxer, and then he fought Groves that was half the man that he used to be. Now, I think that Callum Smith as is, and it's awful to say this, and Dennis says to me, I wish you wouldn't come out with these things, but Callum Smith is a hype job with a protected O. Now, they want to keep his O to fight Billy Joe, and they can sell it as a unification, they both got an O. But do they sell out Anfield after that performance? So, so I look at it differently. Um, I think that is okay as a boxer I think at one, 168 is a flat division isn't it it's like a stepping stone division yeah. you know you step out the amateurs as a 75 boxer and you end up at super mid because it means you don't have to cut too much weight mm. but really by nature you're probably a light heavyweight and that's where you're going to end up to, to make your money so he's in a division because if you if I'm wrong tell me Porky but I'm sure the top 5 people of box rick are all Brits what, uh, Super Middle? Yeah, Billy yeah. Joe, Eubank, Callum, John Ryder, and who's the other one? Callum Smith. Callum Smith, yeah. So, so okay, Rocky Fielding's in there as well, isn't he? Yeah, he's sixth or seventh, I think, yeah. So, so now I'm going to ask you a question. You genuinely believe all that lot are better than Cain the Plant, David Benavides? No. And all these other guys? I don't know. Plant, David Plant and Benavitas walk through all of them, even Billy Joe. Caleb Truex, I'd put in the mimics with those. Jermaine guys. Taylor had a war with him, he got dropped by him. Yeah. He beat him, but he got dropped. Uh, so, so, I think... Walkie, so, yeah. So, 168 isn't really a great division in terms of being stacked. Not anymore. So Smith, I just move up. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even dick around with anything. I just say, guys, I'm moving up to 175. Well, which brings me to the, the time where Joe Gallagher used to come to Peter Fury's gym and he was saying that they were going to stay at 168 because there's bogeymen at 175 plus Callum does the weight easy. Well, now they're saying he's struggling with the weight. The bogeymen are still there at 175, minus Kovalev, he's finished now. But does Callum Smith beat Baturbia or Bivol? Yeah, well, Baturbia did Callum Johnson, and I've heard Callum Johnson uh, gives Callum Smith nightmares in gym. Now, he's a bull strong him. I like him as well, Callum Johnson. I like him, and I think he's had a raw deal out that Gallagher gym. Uh, I think Joe's Gallagher has mainly been interested in the Smiths, hasn't he? He's milked Paul Smith for what he could get. Stephen Smith, they're gone now, aren't they? They're finished. Beefy Smith's still hanging in there. But who's, who's Beefy Smith's best win to say that he's a former world champion? Who never beat a champion? Liam Williams? Well, he's a former world champion, but he never beat a champion. I, I, I don't get that. Well, Willie, Liam Williams has done alright, hasn't he? I mean, that's, that's what you've just said there. Is, what nobody else says. What you just said there is perfect. What did he go on to do? It's like people question Carl Frotcher's win over Pascal. But he went on to beat Diacono and Chad Dawson. He took their O's and won the Laniel at 175. So they they went on to be greats. Do you know what I mean? And he's still knocking people out now with Pascal, isn't he? I'd, I'd, I'd rate Pascal higher than Frotch. Gio, man. Nah, nah, nah. And then Chad Dawson as well. I think Chad Dawson only had one fight at 168. And that was better than all of Frotch's put together. <laughs> Stop it, Terry. You're doing me head in now. <laughs> right. Moving on. Right. So we've covered the, the, the Callum Smith's Debbie Cole. 
but we haven't covered the commentators. The bias from Sky is 